Welcome back to Six More Secrets in Tunic. If you missed it, this is part two of my previous secrets video. And if you haven't seen it yet, check it out on the card above or in the description below. Now, let's jump right back into the secrets. There's a mystery that exists in the minds of many Tunic players, and it is, what is the Far Shore, and where is it located? Some have speculated that the different planes of existence in the game are simply different planes on the cartridge board. But for the most part, we understand it as the spiritual world in Tunic. Whenever in the Far Shore, there are visual elements that always denote its location. The blue and red overlay, the waves in the background, and the specks of RGB that float in space. These can be seen in the far shore, the Shadow Oubliette, as well as the Hero's Grave, demonstrating they are all anchored in that plane. It also appears in the main menu, but that doesn't seem to play into the rest of the game's world. Many other locations contain overlaid colors near the edges of the screen, but due to the difference in colors, I would believe they do not necessarily signify a connection with the far shore. Some of these places include the swamp and the cathedral, where the overlaid colors are swapped in comparison to the far shore, meaning some overlays might simply designate a type of area, like the underground or a forest. But there is one location which appears to be incredibly close to the far shore. The Glyph Tower. The Glyph Tower is a part of the game that may have gone undiscovered by some players. It requires one to have at least six of the golden treasures to open. Once inside, the Glyph Tower seems to almost revere the disquiet ones with pillars surrounding the tower inlaid with their image. Floating around the tower itself are trunic glyphs that rotate with the tower and come into focus at the bottom center of the screen in front of these pillars. As you may have guessed, it creates a message in trunic. However, it is not a normal message but a cipher that when interpreted and translated leads to a very interesting website, which you can visit by going to doyoufeartheeyesofthefarshore.co, where you can find this. This website holds many secrets, some of which the community has not completely deciphered. Some believe that the tentacles of this disquiet being holds a message or a path for the Golden Cross. Others believe this may be showing us the opposite side of a disquiet being from the ones seen in-game, since within the game, the RGB eyes are in mirrored positions. These are all findings we are not completely certain of their intended purpose yet. However, something in this website has yielded a lot more concrete evidence, and that is the audio. Before I can go into that, however, I need to explain our next secret. Tunic. Despite sounding just like the name of the game, Tunic is the community-given name for the musical language that also translates to phonemes, just like Trunic. It can be thought as the spoken version of Trunic. To put it simply, Tunic works by observing the note progression of sounds being played either as a sound effect or as part of the music. In this spectral pitch display, we're able to see in yellow exactly what notes are being played in order allowing us to discern the words being spoken. These can be seen in many places throughout the game. For example, on the title screen, the word welcome can be heard in Tunic.
If selecting a new game, the word new is played. When ringing either of the bells, the sound spells ding dong, and if you open a fairy chest, they will respond in tunic, many times thanking you for releasing them. There are many more examples of tunic throughout the game that add or enhance to the meaning or intent of the situation they are presented in. But it's a bit different when it comes to the website from the glyph tower. The spectral pitch display shown earlier was from the website's audio, and the phrase it translates to is, we are the eyes of the far shore. But Tunic is not the only audio secret that Tunic holds. It has at least one more trick up its sleeves. In a similar way to Tunic, running audio through a spectrogram can also reveal different things, which you might have noticed in the spectral pitch display's background. Some audio visually spells out words. In the case of the website, the Trunic glyphs read the same thing as the audio does, but there are many more locations where there is no Tunic parallel. When entering the shopkeeper's shop, there are two audio variants. When there are products to buy, the glyph for buy can be seen in the audio. When entering the shop where you can find a manual page, which is free, the glyphs for free can be seen. Prompts when asking or denying something have glyphs hidden in the audio that correspond to them. OK and No are two examples of these prompts. There have not been many things found with this method, but even knowing it is a possibility opens many doors. The next secret comes courtesy of one of the imprisoned fairies you release throughout the game, specifically the one found in the fairy fountain where the fairies congregate after being saved. Its message is much longer than any other in the game, and it explains quite a few things. It says, oh hey there, what a journey to over here. Nah, I'm just joking around. Really glad to be out of that cold, tiny chest and moving into this cold, damn cave. What an upgrade. I'm kidding, but seriously, if you see Andrew out there, tell him to stop putting me in that box. No, really, you are a good kid. Good luck with the air, or should I say, as the air. Whoa, spoilers. Look out. But no, I mean it. Forge your own path, golden or otherwise. Either way, I'm back in the box, right? In this case, Andrew is the developer Dicey, or Andrew Shuldice. And as the main designer for Tunic, he was most likely the one responsible for placing the fairies in the chests. I imagine this is just a sweet nod to the developer, at least so far. Our last secret begins in the manual. The back cover of the manual, in fact. Here you can find an odd hexagonal sticker or badge with a fox at its center and Trunic on its borders. These have existed since the early stages of development. On February 22nd, 2016, Dicey tweeted, check out these weird paper coins I found. This secret remained throughout the development of the game and the badge itself reads, Under the moon, contemplate this prayer, near an ancient tomb, plundered for its blade, lies a special place. Which is followed by a prayer to the golden cross one should use. These instructions lead us to the hero's grave where we first got our sword in the forest, but this time, at night. After battling the enemies leading to the grave, we input the prayer and a chest appears. This is the mystery that Dicey has held since the beginning of Tunic's development. Possibly the most important secret in the game. In it, you will find two things. A single coin and...
thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed these last two videos highlighting some of the secrets inside and outside of Tunic. As always, this video would not have been possible without the tireless hours of research the Tuna community has put into it. As mentioned previously, Jessica Kelly and I both have partnered up to make a Tunic Lord Discord, and we would love to have you there. You can also find all of the documents I used for the video there. The link is in the description. If you would like to see what games I might be making videos on next, come check out my stream on Twitch. I stream from Wednesday to Sunday at 8pm EST. The link is below as well. But this is it for me today. If you're itching for more, please check out my other lore videos that should be showing up on your screen right now, and don't forget to subscribe. With that said, I hope you have a great day or night or whatever it may be for you, and I will see you next time.